What's up everybody, it's Kale here. Hey, I thought today that I'd take you guys surfing without any cuts. We're gonna do one shot wonder, but I thought, you know what would be kind of cool is if we had like two angles on this bitch. <laughs> Otherwise, just said that. So I thought my videographer could come along. Should we jump to his angle? Uh, now. Hey, there you are. Um, you know what else I'm thinking that we need is like my future self to, to commentate on this. Can we get my future self in three, two, one? Oh, hi. There you are. Where is hi. he? Oh, <laughs> there he is. Okay, so uh, we're going to go have fun. I think we need to recast this guy. This is uh, one of my favourite sort of spots around where I live. It's just a little reef break. And there's always some sort of waves depending on the swell direction. Today it's a little bit nicer. So we're going to go and hopefully get some good ones. The trickiest part is actually getting out there because uh, there's a lot of rocks, as you'll see. I'll go to the bite mounts, the uh, bite mount soon. But there's all these rocks I've got to negotiate to actually get out the back. So I'm gonna put my camera in and we're gonna go. <clears throat> Just on this, like I've had some terrible moments uh, jumping off the rocks here. Nightmarish moments. <laughs> I think Ooh. this one went okay though. Uh. That was pretty fun. There's like all these little holes in the rock, um, in the reef, I guess, that Isn't you really have to pick your line to get out. This one time when it was like really solid and I didn't really look at the surf properly, I just paddled out without looking at it. You can see the reef sort of ex being exposed there. It's pretty low tide, I think. Um, I just paddled out without looking and the sweep was so bad along the rock shelf there that I um, just got totally messed up and actually dragged down to the second reef. There's like this second turtle shallow thing where um, I actually dry docked and I had to stand up while a four foot wave came and landed on me. It wasn't particularly fun. We'll just ramp up this uh, paddling so that we can get out the back. But I, I've certainly had some shocking paddle outs here. There's another way you can paddle out like out uh, to the right of the spot. Um, here are a few waves coming through. Um, so, and and again, it's like a bit of a gamble because sometimes you just you just don't time it well. And that certainly was the case when I. Uh, what am I saying? Let's get away from a good one. Waiting for a good one. I mean, this is the story, isn't it? You're always waiting for a good one. <clears throat> Let's just uh, wait for that good one, shall we? But we'll fast forward. So yeah, paddling out here can be a nightmare. Um, <clears throat> especially when you can't always duck dive. You know, like it's a little bit tricky to duck dive when it's really shallow. You kind of just have to wear the white water on your head. <laughs> so yes, it's not always been that fun. But I mean, if you look at this other clip here, this is this place on like a good day. Um, I had I had a really fun session that that day. We'll show some more clips of of me surfing that day. Um, but yeah, let's let's jump into the first wave. I love it how you can see the reef from both the angles there. you got to squeal. I mean, if you're excited with a wave, you, you kind of have to squeal, don't you? <laughs> and we paddle out the back. That was my first wave. Not too bad. I'm going to try and get a better one. But what a lot of people don't know is that mostly surfing is just waiting for those good waves. So let's try and focus on. I mean, that's what I sort of pointed out there, that surfing is mostly paddling and waiting in between waves. Um, if we go back to the, some of those other sessions that I've had here, there's just me getting closed out on. Um, this is probably a day where I didn't have to wait that much. Um, there's a few good clips from this day, like that was me backdooring a tube and I nearly made it. That haunted me forever. That was such a good one. Um, but again, most of it's like waiting. I think I did a little um, estimate in one of my other videos talking about the fact that surfing is like so much 
Oh, there's that backdoor tube. <laughs> Look at me, I was so close to getting over it, and then it just buckled me. Ah, oh, so frustrating. How beautiful is it when it's good? It's just like the sickest, sickest spot. Oh, those water angles are amazing. Um, <clears throat> so what I was talking about was when, um, yeah, we, we did some calculations on the last video, and we were talking like, I'd spent throughout my life like 6,200 hours um, chasing surf in the car. Like 6,200 hours. And then if you look at like the amount of time I've actually spent surfing, it's probably more like 10,000 hours, which is that key hour. But right, remember that paddling and negotiating the waves is most of surfing. Right, well, my first wave is <laughs> what am I saying here? Just doing ridiculous selfies. <laughs> That's beautiful. And you're on the hooky ward. I'm just gonna catch a wave quickly. This is me. I think I got really stuck behind this section there. I tried to like force the tube. <laughs> and nothing happened. So as I was saying, <clears throat> um, 10,000 hours Ooh. surfing, but if you break it down in the amount of time actually spent on a wave, riding a wave, it's probably only 2% of your entire session on average. Um, maybe five in a good session. That's not, not great statistics. So um, yeah, if you look at 2%, you're probably spending like 200 hours total out of my entire life, 17 years of surfing on a wave. I've only spent 200 hours doing it. That's crazy. That's the reef. If you, that's the reef we're surfing over. Um, <clears throat> so it's kind of like, it's a bit illogical, the fact that we spend so much time chasing this sport and doing it, when you only get to spend such a micro amount of time actually on the wave, which is the, the point of the whole thing, right? But I guess when we look at the idea of flow state um, and, you know, really getting into flow and finding these addictive experiences, that guy just wasted such a good wave. That's so annoying. Um, that's why I think people are addicted. It's the flow state aspect. What's your estimate as to the percentage of oh, time go, actually you. spent on a wave? Mm, uh, yeah, probably 10 seconds. On a, so, long on a percentage, like on your entire session? Would you say it's like 1%? Yeah, probably. Probably 1%. So you're saying 1%. So if it was 1%, then I'd oh. be like 100 hours throughout my entire life spent on a wave. It's nothing. Oh. If you think about sports like... And again, this is from a from another session at this spot. If you look at sports like skateboarding or whatever, you, you pretty much spend the whole time skating because you've got this consistent playing field. Whereas with surfing, you've got this always changing playing field that's just impossible to control up until now, I guess, with the, with the wave pools and stuff, the advent of wave pools, um, that you have to deal with. And, you know, it limits your, your the time spent on a wave. So I wonder what it's going to be like. Here's me getting a little little shampoo barrel. Um, you wonder what it's going to be like. I love this shot. Look at the board go through the water. How cool is that? Oh, that's such a rad shot. We love shooting water here. It's always nice to <clears throat> mix it up with a few water shots. The boogie board is just getting a couple there. Uh, never call it bodyboarding because, you know, it's boogie boarding, let's be honest. So um, as I was saying, I think the, the reason we're so addicted to... The sport is that we just we find those flow state moments where we enter that state where you have to be so present you know and it fires off a bunch of positive neurochemical reactions in the body that i guess bring us back and and change our neurobiology in a way that keeps us totally addicted to the sport um, I thought I'd talk about the board that I'm writing. The board I'm writing right now, as you can see, guys, just sort of fluffing through. There's a little set there. Oh, that guy kind of got like a little shampoo tube. Um, the board I'm writing right here is my little um, 5.6 JR Raptor. It's like a fishy hybrid thing. The reason I like that board is because it's a mix between a fish and a high-performance shortboard. So it's a thruster setup. It's got three fins. So it allows high performance and it's got some sharp edges, um, but it's also fishy. So it, it's quite easy to paddle and a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, I think I'm about to get a wave. This is my first wave in like friggin' five minutes. It's so frustrating. 
Yeah, here I go. This one again, I'm real late behind the section. I have to take the drop and I just wasted it. And look at my face underwater. Oh, that's so funny. Can we just go back to that and like pause it? <laughs> look at my face. I'm like, fuck. Oh, that's so classic. <clears throat> All right. So there I am popping up out of the water. Um, it's really frustrating when you're waiting that long for a wave and and that happens. Like I was waiting what, like probably 10 minutes for that wave and just a total fizzler. So unfortunately these sessions do happen. You, there's not always a time. That's a guy not getting barreled, if you um, saw that. Um, <laughs> I'm being an asshole. Uh, this just happens, you know, you don't always have the best session. I had one this morning that was just shit, you know, it's just a bit of a low strike rate. Uh, let's go back to another cool session. <clears throat> Here's a wave that I actually missed as well. Again, just heartbreaking to watch. And you see the shape of this thing, it's just like the most perfect <laughs> tube that lined up past Mitchie, my um, videographer. And I could have been in that. Damn it. Look at it. Just a stunning little wave. So we're up in Sydney. Uh, this wave's around Narrabeen. Um, <clears throat> yeah, but whether you should come here or not, you know, it's kind of like a, it's a bit of a secret spot. I can't really say. But uh, <clears throat> yes, what was I talking about? Yeah, these sessions just happen. Let, let's catch another wave. This one, I got a nice little wall to play with. It's kind of a little baby one, and I'll just throw a little roundhouse cut back, only to be hidden by the guy walking on the rocks. Thank you, sir, for that. <laughs> oh, boy. So that was another shitty little wave that I'm not entirely happy with. At this point, I'm getting kind of a little bit frustrated with what's going on in the session and how, how few waves I'm getting. But anyway, I was talking about my surfboard that I'm riding. The reason I like those hybrid boards is because... They paddle really easy because they've got a nice bit of volume in them. They're nice and wide and they're really flat, so they get a lot of speed on the wave. I've had so many comments from people saying, hey, what's that board you're running? It looks like it goes really well. And that's just because it's so flat and picks up so much speed. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, that's not the case when you're on, like, a sharp, really steeply curved thruster. I find it's always nicer to actually just have a... Oh, there's that guy sort of paddle. That guy, let that one go. No, oh, I sort of broke a little bit wide, hey. Did it? What else we got? So here's another little shot of uh, the wave when there's a little bit of turning to do. <clears throat> Just some little wiggles. Anyway, that's on the same board. So the board is really versatile. Like, I've surfed this spot up to, like, four foot on that board. And it tends to work really well. If it is a little bit bigger, I'll like change up the fin setup. I'll put in some more like raked, steeper fins. Um, and then that way you're just on the wave. I mean, I had a few, that's what I also wanted to talk about. I had a few questions about what it feels like to be on a wave. Um, and it's sort of unlike anything else in, in the world. The trouble with these sort of swells is that there's always what looks to be a set coming. Uh, a little bit too easy. Okay. Yeah. So as I was saying in the clip, um, hang on, I think I'm about to catch another wave. Alright, let's see if I can make it past this section. Alright, so I'm on this one, You've got a little bit of space to move. And again, just a slow roundhouse cut back. That one actually really hurt my foot. So I fractured my foot the other week, just a really tiny fracture um, in a really annoying muscle. I'm like, one more. Um, and whenever I do, the, the turn didn't hurt, but when I pulled through the wave to try and get through the back of it, um, the, the pressure of the wave actually sort of crunched my foot a little bit more. It really sent a sharp pain through my foot. But as I was saying, once you're on a wave, it sort of feels like you're skating down a driveway, but you're totally not in control. <laughs> um, or it feels like you're less in control than you are skating down a driveway. I'm going to grab another little wave here. Oh, so this one kind of looks cool. See, again, I went for a little tube. Nothing happened. Just letting down. Let's go, let's go to a proper tube. So this is, oh yeah, this is quite a good wave that I got on that day we've been referencing. 
Um, that is the best feeling. <clears throat> when people ask, you know, what surfing's all about, that is the best feeling. I think Joel Parkinson said, like, it doesn't matter what's going on in your life as long as you're standing in a barrel. So if you are lucky enough to to ever get a tube one day like this guy's not doing, <laughs> um, appreciate it. It's, it's an unexplainable feeling. The sound is probably one of the most interesting things because there's this roar around you coming from the water like a, <sighs> like a really raw feeling that you don't get in those controlled environments that we spoke about before, like with, um, you know, skateboarding or whatever. So again, I think a little set's coming. I know this day was like super painful in that it looked like sets were coming all the time. So let's try and get this one and just go. I think it's going to break a little bit tighter. All right, I'm in, get a little takeoff, jump to the top to get some speed, and again, a bit of a low cutback. My board looks like it's really struggling in those conditions. Like, it's probably more the way it's quite hard to. <laughs> Explain. There's that second reef that I was talking about. It's really hard. That rolled me that day that I had a shocking paddle out here. Right there. Guys, I was saying, if you, if you ever get a chance and you get a barrel one day, it's the best feeling in the world. Um, so let's try and get in. Let's try and come and safely get in. This is a tricky thing at this spot. I've also been uh, severely damaged coming in from the water here as you can see in the GoPro angle um, the rocks are like right there so I got lucky and now the waves are coming though and they're trying to knock me over this is how it, all the people drown when they're fishing and stuff they just get swept off rocks so I'm trying not to like get swept off as you can see another wave is coming and I'm like oh, let me out and I just made it there we go, that was a quick session. That's it. We're on. Thanks for coming surfing. <laughs> if you're new here, make sure you subscribe to the channel and follow me on Instagram at Cal's Broccoli. We'll see you later. Woo!